hello everyone in this video we are going to learn how to read an x-ray so this is a chest x-ray uh, probably of a lady i've taken this x-ray from radiopedia and i'm going to read this x-ray and i'll tell you how you should read the x-ray and comment it uh, during your examinations so this is not for the purposes of uh, diagnosis or treatment this is not meant to be for um, this video is not meant to be for um, maybe radiologists this is just a simple uh, guide for medical students third year and final year medical students who are appearing for their exams so let us begin with reading this x-ray so this x-ray is a plain x-ray okay so first thing that you have to say is whether the x-ray is a plain x-ray or a contrast enhanced x-ray right so how what would you expect uh, to be enhanced in contrast maybe the esophagus right maybe the uh, the urinary tract so these things are enhanced by contrast in an x-ray normally in an x-ray that is given to a medical student so in a chest x-ray uh, most likely it's not a contrast enhanced x-ray so this is a plain x-ray Okay. but plain x-ray of what you also need to as a medical student you also need to identify the anatomy right so this is a plain x-ray of the chest primarily we're trying to look at the chest as you can see we're prim primarily trying to visualize the lungs the chest the mediastinum but some part of the lower part of the neck as well as some part of the abdomen is also visible in this x-ray so this this is a plain x-ray of the chest showing some part of or you can say with some part of of neck and abdomen visible okay so this is a plain x-ray of the chest with some part of the neck and abdomen visible is this a posterior now you have to comment on the view okay so is this a posterior anterior or a anterior posterior view pa or an ap view so an easy way to differentiate that would be the first thing you look at is the ribs okay so the posterior ribs are more prominent than the anterior ribs okay so that gives us a hint that this might be a pa view x-ray of a pa view but obviously you're you're not going to uh, base your uh, judgment on the basis of simple uh, only one fact so you have to look for multiple other evidences okay so another thing that you look for is the scapula so generally what we do while taking a pa view is we ask the patient to abduct and elevate their upper limb okay so we are we are asking them to abduct abduct and elevate their upper limb so that the scapula moves away as you can see the scapula moves away from the lung field so that we can get a clear picture of the lung field okay we can get a clear picture of a lung field therefore uh, this is another uh, evidence of uh, this x-ray being of ba view the third thing that we look for is the clavicles so again you can see that the clavicles are also elevated right and why why is this happening it's because your uh, hands are raised right both of the both of your hands are raised and that's why your clavicle is also elevated so three three facts are enough for me to comment that this is a posterior anterior view so in the posterior anterior view Now, most likely, if this is a PA view, the person was standing up. So, you, you may assume that the person was standing up while taking this x-ray. You can even say, taken in erect posture. Before commenting on the abnormality, which is, uh, I think it's quite visible. It has been on your screen for... Uh, a couple more than a couple of minutes now so you might have already seen the abnormality but before commenting on the abnormality in this x-ray you have to comment on what are the things that you can see normally okay so for that uh, you can you can start commenting from the uh, middle of the x-ray and you can go out 
or you can start coming from, you you can start commenting from the uh, outside of the x-ray and come inside okay you can you can use any method or you can you can use a method which is known as a b c d okay a b c d method so a you are commenting on the airways b you will be commenting on the bones c you will be commenting on the cardiac silhouette and d you will be commenting on the diaphragm okay so you can do anything and then you will comment on the uh, in in airways itself will comment on the lung fields okay so you can you can make any approach but before that what is very important before uh, analyzing the um, uh, x-ray of lungs primarily when you're trying to look at the x-ray of the lungs is you need to look you you need to notice the uh, exposure of the x-ray okay so what happens is your lungs are filled with air right so if it is an overexposed lung that means a lot of x-ray has been uh, sent to take like a, a lot, your lungs were projected to a lot of x-ray more than what should have been what does that happen x-rays have a lot of penetrating power right so they will they might penetrate through whatever consolidation or whatever fluid collection or whatever um, collection infiltration that, that might that there might be in your lungs and that area might appear to be black and you might you might miss the finding right another uh, another possibility is an underexposed lung so in an underexposed lung the number of x rays passing through the lungs would be less than the no normal right so all this reason where the x ray could not pass through or because of the not because of the quality of the lung but because of the um, decrease in the quantity of the x rays these areas may appear to be white okay and you might think that these are consolidations or infiltrates or things like that so again you you will be wrong in interpreting the findings of x-ray so you need to see if this x-ray is a normal as an as a normal exposure or if it is underexposed or overexposed how do you do that you look at the intervertebral space okay if the intervertebral discs are just visible as you can see here these are just visible right intervertebral discs are just visible this is adequately exposed okay so the x-ray <coughs> is adequately exposed and now you look at the rotation okay so why is it important to look at the rotation again if your if your trunk was rotated to one side uh, the amount of x-ray received by that side and by the contralateral side may be different and so um, you might and and the heart also the shape of the heart also may be different so you might be interpreting the heart as too large or too small but that might be just because of the rotation of the x-ray so you have to comment on the rotation for that you will try to visualize the uh, medial end of the clavicle so it's probably here and the medial end of clavicle is probably here okay so medial end of the clavicle probably here to here and you look at the distance between the medial end of the clavicle to the spinous process of this vertebrae okay so uh, again if like if i trace the medial end of the clavicle while it's not so clearly visible here and i'm not obviously i'm also not an expert of um, reading an x-ray so if i'm making a mistake please uh, put it in the comment down comment box down below but i believe that this is slightly rotated okay so the distance is i don't think it's quite exactly in the center so you can comment that if you feel like if you are comfortable uh, with commenting that you may comment it as rotate like it this x-ray is slightly rotated if you if you're not com if you're not comfortable with the finding it's better not to speak what you don't know okay so let's say in an exam situation you are not comfortable okay so you do not say it now if the examiner asks you didn't you see the rotation you can say uh, i was not able to directly de like uh, clearly delineate the medial ends of the clavicle but from what i believe it is slightly rotated but it may not be also okay so it looks like it may not it's it's not so much rotated either so again if you're not so sure about a finding you do not say this okay you do not uh, utter that finding out so you've talked about so this is this was all about what you are 
commenting on the general x-ray okay so the it's a plain x-ray of the chest with some part of the neck and abdomen visible uh, in the posterior anterior view taken in an erect posture the x-ray is adequately adequately exposed and may be non-rotated okay the no, we can see the normal anatomical structures like the trachea so let's begin with the abcd approach okay so a is for the airways so let's look at the trachea i can see the trachea overlying the vertebral spinous processes and at this point the trachea has bifurcated okay so the trachea has bifurcated and it's come to this okay so now after its bifurcation you'll you're generally not able to see the um, uh, markings of the trachea then you look at the lungs okay the lungs airways in the left part left side sorry in the right side of the chest looks to be normal right you can see bronchopulmonary markings all over the chest the lungs does, do not seem to be collapsed uh, the lungs do not see, seem to be uh, consolidated right so you look at that the next thing that you look at look for is the number of ribs okay so this is the first rib right so this is the first rib okay you can even do it like this so this is the first rib this is the second rib this is the third rib right sorry this is actually your first rib this is the second you you either count the anterior rib or the posterior rib so this is the first rib this is the second rib this is the third rib here okay this is the fourth rib uh, anterior ribs are quite difficult to count sometimes this is the fifth rib this is the sixth rib and six and a half okay seventh rib so not clear not all of the seventh rib is seen so this is this has six and a half anterior ribs again the first rib the second rib the third rib the fourth rib the fifth rib sixth rib and some part of the seventh rib so maybe six and a half which means that this x-ray had been taken in deep inspiration why is it important why is it important imagine this if you have if you took the x-ray in a expiration field and during expiration your airways they collapse right they, they might not collapse but uh, your airways they come closer close to each other your lungs is small in volume and the airway is definitely it's narrow okay narrow than a uh, during inspiration so it might appear that um, you know that there is a consolidation just because your lungs have collapsed or your lungs are small in volume okay because they are more in a way they are more concentrated right so they might appear to be consolidated now if you if you cannot if you do not count if you miss counting the ribs and if you interpret it as uh, consolidation but when you start counting the ribs you might count only four to five ribs right so that means that the person had expired at that time so if you are, if the person had expired at that time and you are commenting it at it as a consolidation that is obviously wrong isn't it it's a it's a misinterpretation so for that to avoid that you have to count the ribs again in this field also in this in the in the left side also you can see the first rib the second rib the third rib fourth rib fifth rib the sixth rib seventh rib okay so something like that so obviously there's a pathology here so we're not so much worried about hyperinflation or hyperinflation because we know that the pathology has is pushing the um is pushing the lungs and the lungs must be collapsed right because it is pushing the lungs from below so we, we talked about the airways okay airways you 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 may not be able to appreciate tracheal deviation why a uh, tracheal deviation slight tracheal deviation i think it is um, slightly pushing the trachea to the left side uh, sorry to the right side to this side uh, but but not so much okay so the like although there is a lot of fluid here uh, there's a pathology here so the trachea should be deviated so again it is not necessary that it has to be deviated okay sometimes there's so much of fluid that the entire mediastinum is shifted okay so even with this amount of fluid it sometimes may not be deviated so if you are comfortable if you if you feel like this is deviation you can comment so you've commented on the airways let's look at the bones um so we'll look at the clavicle you have the humerus here the scapula here right so all of these seem to be normal another thing that i missed while commenting on the lung fields was these things okay so these are most likely these are most likely um 
place there for monitoring okay so don't get confused okay these are not uh, some holes that are burnt into the um, uh, chest wall of this patient okay these are these are most likely ecg monitors that are placed placed in this person again uh, you comment on the ribs okay so you have looked at the ribs again you can count the ribs at this moment also but it's better to count the ribs before you interpret uh, any finding in the lung fields okay you have you've commented on the normal c-spine also you can see the c-spine you can see the transverse processes you can see the you can be you can just see the intervertebral space in the remaining uh, thoracic vertebrae the clavicle seems to be normal there's no fractures right humerus also okay seems to be normal the scapula bone also seems to be normal don't mistake the border of scapula as lung collapse okay so as you can see this is the border of the scapula this is not a lung collapse this is not pleural margin okay how do you differentiate can you see this these are all these all of these are air bronchograms you can see, you can see all those air bronchograms over the margin of the over this margin itself okay so beyond this margin itself so if there had been a collapse you would not be able to see the lung tissue here you you would not have been able to see the air bronchograms here so that is how you comment so a you have commented on the airways b you have commented on the bones c you will comment on the cardiac silhouette so the majority of the right border of the heart is made by right ventricle and the left border of the heart is made by left ventricle uh, if there is a light, right atrial enlargement you would be able to see double splaying of the trachea again that is uh, beyond the scope of this video but obviously you are not able to look at the left border of the heart okay because there is some pathology here so you are not being able to appreciate the left border of the heart and you are not able to appreciate uh, you are not able to comment on the um, status of the heart size of the heart okay so maybe if imagine this was the normal border of the heart how do you know that this patient has cardiomegaly so you draw a line in the midline and you f look for the maximum maximum distance on the right side so I, I i believe this is uh the maximum distance on the right side and i believe this is the maximum distance on the left side so imagine this is a this is b so you have to add a plus b okay so and you also calculate the maximum distance thoracic distance okay maximum thoracic distance imagine this is c so a plus b divided by c this should be less than 0 0.5 okay so that means that your the size of the heart should be less than 50 percent of the size of your maximum distance of your thorax ma maximum thoracic distance so that is how you how you will comment on the size of the heart but obviously you are not able to see the border of the left border of the heart so you you it's better off you do not comment uh, we've all also talked about the uh, cardiac silhouette let's talk about the diaphragm so the diaphragm again the diaphragm the right side of the diaphragm it is situated up uh, it is situated more proximally superiorly than the left side of the diaphragm again you are not able to see the left side of the diaphragm why because uh, there is a pathology here but if like if someone asks you what is the reason why the right side of the diaphragm is higher than the left side of the diaphragm you will not say that this is because of the liver there okay so it's not because of the liver it's because of the heart that pushes that is that rests over the uh, central as well as the left side of the diaphragm the left border of the heart would rest over the left side of the diaphragm and it pushes the uh, pushes the left side of the diaphragm down it's not because the liver pushes it up it's because the heart pushes the left side down okay so the you can comment on the you can see the right the right dome of the diaphragm and um all of the abdominal structures are not not quite visible right so you've also commented on the diaphragm it's also better to comment on the uh, subcutaneous tissue here so all of these are soft tissues right these are soft tissues sometimes what happens is patients have chest drain in situ and uh, there might be a lot of emphysema here so you have to uh, comment on the on on that itself also okay and uh, sometimes there might be a lung abscess leading to emphysema sometimes there might be a tumor leading to emphysema so if that is the case you also have to comment on the soft tissues don't get confused this is nothing this is just the breast of the lady okay shadow of the breast now we are talking about the pathology so uh, you'll you'll be seeing i i can see a normal 
normal everything okay so normal uh, trachea normal cardiac ciliate the lung fields the bones and diaphragm things like that okay the pathology in this in this x-ray is a radio opaque density radio opaque density present in the left and right please get oriented this is always your left side and this is the right side of the patient okay your right is the patient's left side because the imagine that the patient is looking at you from in front if the patient is looking at you from in front your right would be the patient's left and your left would be the patient's right if it's uh, too difficult for you to remember it like that you can also look at the heart okay so generally the in most people the heart is located in the center extending up towards the left side of the chest right so unless the person has a dextrocardia you might be you might be able to comment on right and left just by looking at the heart alone okay so uh, on the left side of the heart the abnormality uh, sorry on the left side of the chest the abnormality that can, i can see is a fluid filled opacity sorry it's a it's a radio opacity on the left side on the left side of the chest okay so how do you know that this is a fluid it's because of this this is a meniscus okay this is a meniscus you know when you put when you pour fluid into a capillary it forms a meniscus right so that is exactly what is happening here uh, this fluid is also tracking up up to the axilla okay so this fluid is tracking up up to up towards the track uh, up towards the axilla you can see that the fluid is going towards the axilla this sign is known as alice's s curve okay alice's s curve so you need to also comment on that because that will differentiate it from a hydro pneumothorax what would be a hydro pneumothorax like so imagine this imagine you saw this on an x-ray imagine you saw everything like everything was white and this part was straight so a normal fluid should take a meniscus but this fluid has taken a straight uh, margin okay so it has taken up a straight margin straight border why because there might be air here so air pushing on the fluid making it straight so if you were to see a straight um, margin of the fluid then you would comment it as hydronemothorax but as you can see this is a fluid which is tracking up along the lateral border of the chest towards the axilla tracking up along the lateral border of the chest towards the axilla this is exactly how Dav davidson defines a an x-ray of um of 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 plural effusion so uh, it might be nice to explain it like that and so if your examiner asks what sign is this you will say this is alice s curve okay so um okay so there is a uh there's a there's a ma massive plural effusion okay so there's a lot of uh, sorry there's a lot of fluid collection in the left side so my my diagnosis would be plural effusion after you see that now the questions come so they might ask you what are the causes of plural effusion and things like that right so you they might ask you how you'll manage this patient uh but i think with this video you you were able to understand how you will be commenting on an x-ray of the chest if you want me to make similar videos uh, uh, discussing different other other different pathologies that might be commonly asked in your final year or third year viva uh, examinations uh, please comment uh, on the comment box below and i will i will try to i'll try my best to make more videos in the future thank you so much for watching this video have a great day